Hello everyone. So today uh, we'll talk about electronic transitions uh, with respect to UV spectroscopy. Uh, I hope uh, you remember the previous videos I have posted in UV spectroscopy. Last uh, we discussed about Lambert Beer's law. Now today what I'm going to discuss about is the basic transitions which are uh, sh which are responsible for absorbance in the UV range basically. So let us go ahead with what do we understand by electronic transition. I hope uh, with that prior uh, knowledge of what do we understand by highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, we can start with the transition. Uh, what happens basically is if a molecule is having a bond, if it is a single uh, bond, right, we consider this bond is sigma bond, right, and when it is having a double bond, then we consider that the first bond is definitely sigma and the second bond is a pi bond and rest if it goes with like three bond definitely one would be sigma bond and two are the pi bond i hope you remember that the sigma bond takes place by the proper overlap so that is a strong bond and p or pi bond takes place due to this kind of overlap which is not strong and that is why you call it as a pi bond so what uh, we can see here is if the light falls on the sample obviously the sample is going to interact with the light and there will be absorbance and that is what we are going to detect under uv so now what uh, that interaction did it actually helped in uh, transiting that electron uh, from like here let's say two electrons are there so they may jump to another electronic level right so now there are many possibilities of the jumping from homo which is highest occupied molecular orbital these are known as bonding orbitals which are occupied and these are lowest unoccupied molecular orbital lowest unoccupied molecular orbital which are antibody so obviously the electron will transit from the bonding to the antibonding like there will be transition from homo to lumo from here to here now what is the energy requirement for that for sigma to sigma star it is highest as you remember that sigma bond is a single bond and it is difficult to transit that electron that's already quite stable and then that goes like this if you can see sigma is single bond i hope you remember pi is when there is one double bond involved what is N? N is non-bonding. Means it's there but it is not involved in the bonding. So it is a non-bonding. And what is that? That is basically the lone pair. So if oxygen is having a lone pair, this is a sigma bond, this is a pi bond. But this is not involved in bonding. But the electrons are present. So there is a possibility that these electrons also show transition from one state to another. They also get uh, to the excited state. So they are termed as N. So there is a possibility that it goes to like this. Now overall what I want you to remember as of now is the energy requirement for the transition of sigma to sigma star would be highest. Obviously n to sigma star because it is also not easy to transit this lone pair to a sigma uh, star. Then pi to pi star and then n to pi star. Let us go in this one more time. Uh, by looking into the molecule you should be able to understand that which type of transition is likely to क्या होगा अगर एल्केन होगा ठीक है तो सिंगल बॉन्ड है इफ इट इज सिंगल बॉन्ड सो ऑब्वियसली देयर इज अ सिग्मा बॉन्डिंग इन्वॉल्व कार्बोनिल्स लेट्स से इफ दिस काइंड ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल इज प्रेजेंट सो देयर इज अ डबल बॉन्ड सो देयर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ दिस ट्रांजिशन देन अनसैचुरेटेड कंपाउंड्स स्पेशली आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट कार्बन कार्बन सो देयर इज पाई टू पाई स्टार पॉसिबिलिटी N to sigma star, when N is involved, that means definitely the molecule like oxygen, nitrogen, which have kind of lone pair in them, then that only is the possibility. And here it would be single bond attached. While N to pi star means double bond. There is a double bond, there is a lone pair, so this is the possibility. While like this kind of compound is there, where there is only single bond, but is a lone pair, so N to sigma star possibility is there. So I hope with this you are able to understand that looking to the structure also we can identify which type of transition is likely to occur. Let us go ahead with one more revision final that the first 
transition which requires highest energy right so if you remember e was hc by lambda in one of the videos we have done uh, on numericals also on this equation and theory also so you know there is an inverse relation so now when the requirement is highest that means the wavelength in which it shows absorbance would be lowest so if you see it shows around 125 nm only very low and if you remember the uv range starts from 200 to around 400 visible is around 400 to maybe 750 or 800 so the range is high and this is low that means such kind of compound are not going to reflect in the uv spectrum they are not going to absorb this uh, uv range uh, because this lambda is very low so definitely those compounds with only single bonds are not going to show the uv spectrum second is n to pi star so n means lone pair sigma means single bond so such kind of molecule let's say uh, ch3 ch let's say aldehyde is there or maybe ketone is there when there is possibility of lone pair then a single bond n to sigma star is there but again energy requirement is high second in comparison to this but high that means the wavelength will be less so if you see here the wavelength is around 150 to 250 right 150 to 250 so it's higher than this but still it, it, it is just near uv so a very small peak sometimes you may observe but a clear cut uv peak will be visible in these two type of transitions because as per our understanding the energy requirement is less and obviously the wavelength is high so it falls in the uv visible range now coming to uh, which kind of transitions uh, like let's say if this is the molecule uh, this is acetone so it's like ch3 c double bond o ch3 so now it is lone pair is there so n to pi star is also possible pi to pi star is also possible so now if you see the uv graph here you'll find two peaks here there is one peak uh, it's around 274 and here if you extrapolate uh, you will get one more peak let's say around 195 so how can we uh, locate the peaks first of all you have to look into the wavelength whose wavelength is higher obviously this wavelength is higher so if the wavelength is high energy is less so out of these two transitions whose energy is less definitely this that means the wavelength is high so first point with respect to wavelength you can easily locate that which type of transition is uh, this it could be right that is first point with respect to wavelength second with respect to absorbance also you can observe if you can see the absorbance is quite high while here the absorbance is quite low right ye peak aise nahi dikh rahi hai na aapko aise hi hai absorbance kam hai so on that basis also can you find that it is n2 pi star definitely because pi to pi star or always a high intensity and intense absorption is there uh, simply you can see that if it is a c double bond o this would be a single bond and single bond is sigma now double bond uh, is obviously this kind of overlap so i said it is a pi bond and then oxygen is having a lone pair so normally this kind of transition is not intense it's, it's like very weak weak uh, transition takes place and that is why the intensity is less and absorbance is less so very small uh, weak peak you will observe in case of n2 pi star so i hope with this uh, you are clear with all of the four types of transitions we clearly said that pi to pi star and n2 pi star transitions would be clearly visible in uv uh, range let us go ahead with what do we call those compounds which are present in the uh, structure and they are actually uh, responsible for the color so those are known as chromophore and it is known as color bearing group so if you are seeing a graph a peak in the uv range so these are the groups these are the compounds which are present in the compound and they absorb light in the uv range these compounds are known as chromophore so if c double bond c is there right this is the entire molecule let's say this is the entire molecule but if last you have this kind of molecule so this group would be responsible for showing the uv range so this group you call it as a chromophore and looking into this i think ab aapko pata chalega ki ye pi to pi star hi hona chahiye hai na pi molecule hi hai yahan koi lone pair to hai nahi 
right similarly if you look into this you can see that this is the group which is responsible and probably pi to pi star right i think double bond now you are able to understand n to pi star pi to pi star and like that here also is a possibility of n to pi star so wherever you uh, see oxygen nitrogen you can quickly respond that it has to have a n to pi star a uh, transition so that is why types of transitions were discussed but now i think you understand that out of the entire formula which could be big there is a very small group which is present and is responsible for showing the uv uh, peak let us go ahead with what do we finally call a chromophore as it is the compound which is covalently bonded group functional group that shows characteristic absorption in the uv range it could be double bond triple bond and halogen atoms like all oxygen nitrogen atom so basically chromophores can be of two types first when they only show pi to pi star transition that means only double bond involved and no hetero atom jisme lone pair ho hai na and second it could be the compound which is having pi to pi star n to pi star both jisme lone pair bhi hai aur double bond bhi hai jaise ye azo compound so it is having n which is lone pair having compound and double bond and like so i hope you remember now chromophore is that functional group which either could have double bond so that it can show this type of transition or it is having double bond and lone pair element both so that it shows both type of transition so identification of a chromophore would be very easy so when you will see the uh, uv spectrum if you see a, a spectrum band near this it could be because of 2 3 conjugated unit if you see a band with a very low intensity definitely it would be n to pi star carbonyl group abhi humne acetone mein dekha tha hai na 274 pe peak dikh rahi thi aur kafi low intensity thi so we can see that there could be a carbonyl group simple conjugated chromophores if they are possible like dienes means double bond two times double bond or alpha beta unsaturated ketones like 1 3 double bond are there along with uh, c double bond o and very high uh, intense absorption so then you can locate them and if like the emix value is between this definitely it has to be a aromatic system so looking into the graph now uh, with the range you can probably uh, think on that yes this could be present now coming to there is one more functional group which if it present the color gets intensified so this is a color enhancing group remember chromophore which we discussed was color bearing group so it was having the color oxochrome does not have a color but when it get attached to a chromophore it in intensifies the color so it is this is the substituent which is attached to a chromophore it themselves does not absorb light it is not responsible for absorbing the light and color it does not do that because that is what chromophore do but whose presence bring about a shift in the band and increases the intensity so it increases the intensity it may increase the wavelength of the particular group these groups are helping groups they are color enhancing groups like let's say these groups if they are present in the structure they usually change the wavelength shift to 5 to 10 nm the shift Uh, takes place let us uh, see what i'm talking about oxochromic uh, if any group is attached what does it do if it helps in increasing the conjugation then the molecule gets you know uh, stabilized and due to which the wavelength increases let's say if benzene is there the resonance is possible here i hope you remember this so now if phenol is there these lone pairs are going to further increase the resonance possibility right the electron transition takes place so there is an increase in conjugation there is one more possibility and that happens with nitrogen also so you can see the wavelength change and the color also aniline is quite dark color benzene is not less color so what uh, does the exo oxochrom do it actually intensifies the color by bringing in the conjugation so now what could be the shifts if such uh, compound is attached what we are trying to say is if it's absorbance versus wavelength 
and if this is the peak it could go to right hand side wavelength increases it could go to left hand side wavelength decreases if i uh, can increase the absorbance this way or i can decrease the absorbance so with this peak there are four possibilities which i have discussed let us go in detail red shift if the peak was like this but it shifted towards the right hand side of the spectrum shifted towards the longer wavelength so earlier it was showing peak at 240 now it is showing peak at 250 10 nm increase in the wavelength why because you have attached a compound which is responsible for increasing the conjugation okay yeah, and sometimes it happens uh, with respect to polarity of solvent also i will post a separate video of factors affecting these transitions in detail today's aim is just to show you what type of transition and shifts are possible so coming to the blue shift if it is shifted towards a shorter wavelength so if this is the peak and it shifted towards this shorter wavelength decreases then it is known as hypsochromic shift red shift and blue shift and definitely when i said that because of conjugation it was increasing so if you remove the conjugation it will decrease let's say this is nh2 i said that due to the conjugation this is possible and increase in the intensity observed now if you keep it in a solution which is acidic aapne ph change kar diya polarity change kar di and nh2 becomes nh3 plus ab kya hoga ab ye lone pair to available nahi hai theek hai conjugation ho gaya decrease that is why a blue shift occurs at a shorter wavelength earlier it was showing at 280 now it will show at 203 right now coming to the next two when i said that the absorbance also can be intensified so if the intensity of absorption increases right you can see 2750 3560 so if it's just like earlier it was like this and now it is like this so there is an increase in the intensity what is that that is hyper hyper se samajh jana hyper matlab high so if the intensity is increasing it is hyperchromic shift then hypo hypochromic hypo means decreases intensity decreases now you see biphenyl 19000 and it decreases when 2 methyl is there so biphenyl or naphthalene uh, let's say naphthalene example if you can take naphthalene is quite uh, you know stable and sorted but when there is 2 methyl naphthalene it distorts the geometry of the naphthalene so there is an imbalance and due to which the intensity decreases so if some com compound like koi aisa oxochrome aa jaye jo stabilize kar de to intensity badhegi aur destabilize kar de to intensity decrease hogi so in a nutshell what i want you to remember from today's video is just like if there is certain group which is having a color which is responsible for the uv peak that is known as chromophore now if there is certain group which is added to this uh, group and it intensifies or effect this color that is known as oxochrome right and now what effect does it make either it can increase the absorption peak intensity hyper increases or it could decrease from the normal that is hypo decrease in the intensity and if you go by wavelength either it may shift this to the right hand side that is known as bathochromic shift that is increase in the wavelength or it may decrease the wavelength right that is known as hypsochromic shift to do hi option honge obviously peak mein apne paas mein ya to wo right mein shift hogi wavelength ki taraf ya left mein shift hogi wavelength less ya up absorbance high ya down absorbance less so i think with that you are able to have a, a quick revision of what are the four possibilities of transition and what are the four possibilities of uh, shift so very soon i'll be posting more of the videos under ultraviolet spectroscopy so thank you so much for listening and uh, subscribing my channel thank you so 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 much